It's been an incredible time here and an incredible honor to be invited. Uh, so thank you, Deepak. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I wanted to introduce, you know, I, I, noted, I, I realized that in speaking with uh, a number of you here that even the term wearable technology uh, seems a bit strange. And, um, and so I just want to take a, a few minutes to introduce what it is first and why, um, in, you know, is it, a, and then in fact uh, ask the question, is this a curse or a blessing? Because uh, um, you know, uh, with the great, uh, with some of these uh, innovations, sometimes uh, you can have a little bit of both. Uh, a little bit about uh, our, the, the company myself. The company that I work with is uh, called Misfit Wearables. And, uh, found, you know, we, I founded the business with um, uh, my longtime friend Sridhar Iyengar and uh, John Scully, the former uh, CEO of Pepsi and of Apple. And uh, we decided that uh, we wanted to make products that would uh, uh, deliver technological innovations in a way that was unobtrusive, that will melt into the very fabrics of our lives, uh, literally and figurative, uh, figuratively. And so uh, we, uh, we've done a number of companies, mostly on the East Coast, and finally we decided to uh, try something on the West Coast. And uh, so we raised some money, and we did this uh, crowdfunding campaign uh, on our favorite uh, platform, Indiegogo. And uh, it became uh, quite a success because uh, uh, we uh, achieved our goals when just uh, within a few hours of launch. Uh, so if, you've ever, if you have, uh, have any thoughts of uh, doing your own project or, or, or products or whatnot, uh, crowdfunding, a great idea. And Indiegogo is just an incredible platform. Uh, we just released a product, uh, the, the one I'm wearing right now, the Shine. It's an activity tracker on the Apple Store just, last, uh, just a few days ago, actually. So you can, you can go get it there. Uh, San Francisco, and a lot of our work is done in Vietnam. Uh, very proud of our team there, where all the, a lot of the deep science and uh, uh, engineering happens. We manufacture everything in, in Seoul. Um, our mission, very simple. It's uh, to inspire people to live healthier, more active lives. Um, and it's with, uh, we, do, we, do, we do that through our, our wearable technology, as well as uh, the apps and the mobile services that we provide. So, uh, the real question that I wanted, to, uh, a couple questions I wanted to address, um, you know, what is it that we're really after? And uh, ultimately, uh, if you're in the healthcare business, if you're working in healthcare, a lot of people say that you're really in the health, in the, in the habit change business. And uh, to inspire change, uh, really what we uh, are after and what we need are insights. Insights into ourselves, into our habits, what it is that we do, why we do it. Um, and the, the debate has been around, you know, at least in, in Silicon Valley, is it about getting more data or better algorithms? And I think it is quite settled in many ways that it's really about having better data because better data, you know, engenders better algorithms. I actually think really it's about having better data. And uh, now that we ha live in this world of sensors, and I see Deepak wearing a number of them, uh, I always see him wearing a number of sensors, uh, we have this unprecedented ability now to uh, get data and insights in a way that uh, just in a few years ago we didn't, we didn't have. And it's mainly because of uh, many of the things that uh, what we heard in the previous talk, and it's enabled mainly by mobile internet. Um, you know, this little device right here. Uh, now, these sensors, they're no good if they're not used, okay? And, uh, you know, you can have the most accurate sensor in the world, but uh, if you don't wear it, the accuracy of those sensors is zero. And so the thought has been, let's make sensing ambient, okay? Two ways to do that. Uh, one is to put it into, our, into the environment, into our rooms, the tables that we sit at, the cars that we drive in and whatnot. Um, but we're limited there as well because, you know, you can't take our rooms with us. So the other approach has been to put it on the body. Um, now, there are a number of limitations there because uh, of wearability. You know, because um, many of the things that, are, that you see in the market now are hard to wear. And uh, so let me just show you a few of these things and just, you know, introduce you to, you know, what is wearable technology. It, it, uh, just quick poll. Is anyone wearing any technology right now? Any 
fitness trackers or smart watches or anything like that? Okay, so a fair amount, about uh, 15, 10, 10, 15%. Um, and so clearly it is starting to, uh, these are things that people are starting to wear, uh, but it's not, main, it's not really mainstream right now. Um, these are just a, just a sampling of some of the things that people uh, that, are, that, that are out there now. Um, we have clips of various sorts that measure activity. Uh, you clip it onto your pants or onto your shirt or whatnot. Uh, you may recognize some of these products. You have straps of various sorts, uh, you know, heart rate straps. You may have heard of those. Those have been around for some time. Arm straps of various types. Uh, a lot of wristband, wrist-worn products. Um, and I think when smartwatches come out, those will have accelerometers. We'll be able to measure from there as well. Um, sleep-related products. Uh, these are things that you would wear that would measure your sleep. Uh, patches, they're these devices that you would actually stick on your body and measure different uh, things, uh, biometric signals. Uh, Shoe-worn products, these are starting to get, uh, these have been around for some time now. And even shirts, clothing that has sensors built into it. So, um, uh, so that's what we, uh, so this is the world of wearables as it is right now, as we know it right now. We obviously also have a lot of apps, thousands and thousands, of, probably tens of thousands of health apps that uh, you can, where you can do all sorts of things um, health related. So the real question is, why hasn't wearables taken off? Why, why didn't like everybody raise their hand here or even 30% of the people raise their hands here? And uh, I think it's really, it comes down to a few things. I think it comes down to the fact that we, um, it, what the devices look like what we see on the left side. It makes you look like Iron Man. It looks kind of cool maybe for fitness, but it's not something you'd wear maybe even to an event like this. Um, and so I believe this world of wearables is heading towards uh, one where it's more about unobtrusiveness, and uh, so we'll see more of that, on what's more on the right side. You know, I asked this question a while back, what, uh, you know, when is this wearable stuff going to be uh, uh, mainstream? You know, Iron Man's cool, but I don't want to look like him. And someone tweeted back, well, when it makes me not look like Tron. And so... I, uh, I, I would agree with that. That's probably a good starting point. The, uh, so the dream uh, has been in a number of uh, us wearable technology companies is to, uh, is to make great wearable products, products that would, uh, the devices that would be worn all of the time for a long time by a lot of people. And I think this is going to be possible by really focusing on an enduring wearable experience and an engaging user experience. And I think with this, we will get better data which really is about um, more, uh, you know, uh, more diverse data, more continuity, and that kind of thing. And with that, I think we will really start to see this wearable technology revolution take off. Now, um, uh, the last thing I wanted to pose really is, you know, are we really at the edge of like this next era in computation? You know, we've uh, come from the, in, the, in the 80s, you know, we had the PC revolution. Uh, my partner John was a big part of that. Um, and uh, then we had the, inter the internet revolution, mobile in the 2000s, and now in the post-PC era of the iPad and uh, tablet computing, cloud computing, uh, where else are we going to, you know, will wearable computing really take off? Well, I, you know, we're starting to see it as, as you know, you may have seen in the fitness and the wellness technology space, you know, activity monitors of various sorts. Um, but uh, with it, with many of the, uh, these eras of technology that have come, uh, have also come a number of habits, social habits that have developed that I, I think are, um, are not always good. Um, you know, we have uh, distraction coming in. We have, you know, the question really are, you know, while we are more connected online, are we really connected offline? Are we uh, having these devices uh, steal away from the, the natural social interactions that we would have in person. Um, you know, you have this person here, uh, you know, um, I know I've been guilty of doing something like this, certainly, um, uh, maybe even right now. And uh, it's, it's, you know, the question is, will these habits become more socially acceptable? And what will happen when we have wearable, more wearable technology? Will we be living in our virtual worlds and ignoring the people around us, next to us? Or um, this is a picture from a subway stop in, in, in Tokyo. And this is very, this is like, like if, you, if you're not using your smartphone, it's strange. 
you know, and if, if you actually try to talk to, to the person next to you, it's like, uh, it's a, it, it is strange. So, um, so maybe it is becoming acceptable. I don't know, is that a good thing or not? Well, um, I w you know, I, uh, you, you know, if uh, you look through the lens of evolution, um, you know, we've made progress in some ways. Industrial revolution, I don't know, um, probably a good thing. Uh, but something seems to have gone wrong, you know, when, uh, with the PC and with the internet. Um, but I, I have hope. I feel, I have hope that with smartphones, smartwatches, um, you know, and uh, with, uh, you know, Google Glass even, uh, perhaps uh, we will actually develop some positive uh, uh, social IQ. And in fact, it will uh, uh, more erase the, bo the boundaries between the online connectivity and offline connectivity. So um, this is the question I want to pose, really, and it's, I, th I think it's still a kind of an unanswered question um, of, whether the future will be these last three images or uh, more like uh, the middle two images. So that's really, uh, I wish I had some answers, you know. I, I, don't, I, I, uh, I would uh, uh, hesitate to make any predictions, but um, you know, the approach that we've taken with the product that we made was, you know, let's focus on wearability, let's focus on being able to deliver a product that would really actually encourage social interaction, encourage sharing, being able to bring uh, peace and, and, uh, and bring um, increased social interactions with people where people might say, oh, how are you doing? And I can just tap and then you can see. Oh, you're doing, you know, uh, I'm doing pretty well, how about you? Um, I don't know, we'll see that if, uh, if that happens. So this is Shine, this is the product that we just launched. It's about the size of a quarter. And the way it works is you just tap it and lights turn on. And uh, it just tells you your progress for the day. And if you go full circle, that means you're done for the day. Uh, you can wear it in a number of places, not just on your wrist or not just on your pants. You can actually even wear it on your necklace, on, on, on a bra. You know, uh, I always say that these people don't really need activity trackers on these photos, but they, they do make us look good. Um, but you can wear it in a, a number of places. I'm wearing it on my lapel right now. Um, you can wear it as a watch. It actually tells the time. You can wear it as a necklace. We've got uh, Kim here wearing it on her neck. Uh, it's waterproof so you can swim with it. And uh, there's a sport band so you can go uh, rough it out in it and, and you'll be fine. We'll clip it into your shoe. We have this app also released on the, on the App Store. You can download it now. And so, and yeah, you can get it at the Apple Store. Thank you for your time. Uh, and it's really an honor and a pleasure to be here. element of this technology is of course to get people moving and I love that. Another is to monitor their sleep which is amazing because so many people have no idea about sleep and how we spend like one third of our life sleeping because we need it and yet our society is deprived of it. But a few months ago, and I'm saying this because, you know, this is such a neat thing he's wearing. It's only the size of a coin. Um, I was in meditation, and I was, um, and this is while uh, we were doing the study with uh, Alyssa's group over there. And I came across this sutra, which I'm familiar with, I'm sure a lot of you are, in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Uh, which says, when somebody is established in peace consciousness, all beings around them cease to feel hostility, just by their presence. Not by what they say, not by what they do, but just by their being. So this idea did not leave, and then of course, all of us who are physiologists, biologists, clinicians, Every day we use electronic devices to monitor what's happening in the body. EEG, heart wave, uh, EKG. <clears throat> so there's a, there's a professor here at UCSD, actually no, at Scripps, he came from Cleveland. He's the number one in the world in digital medicine, digital cardiology. So you can actually take your smartphone, put it here, and your EKG will be read and interpreted in a few seconds and appear back on your, 
on your smartphone. Or you can put your um, hand there and it will measure the cortisol in your blood, or sorry, in your, um, in your sweat. So I went to him and I said, you know, that life, wherever there's life, there's electromagnetic activity. And if this Sutra of Patanjali is true, then something must happen to the heart when you're in peace consciousness. And when you're stressed, we know heart rate variability is rigid. And now there's tons of research on heart rate variability as the best measure of whether you're stressed or peaceful. It's the best measure. So we went to Dr. Topol, and he's got this digital technology. And next time we're doing the study, Alyssa and team, we're going to do digital measurements too. Because what he says is, you can measure the stress of a group of people, of a group of people, because you know every time you get stressed, your heart rate variability gets, stick, uh, gets rigid, because it's your sympathetic nervous system that dominates. And every time you go into meditation, your heart rate variability changes, and you can monitor it remotely. And not only that, our heart wave variabilities create electromagnetic fields that create interference patterns that influence all of us. So, you know, you go to a football match and everybody gets rowdy and after a certain critical mass, uh, they go into rage. Well, the opposite is also true, and Maharishi taught us this many years ago, that you have lots of people meditating, then there's peace in the environment, even outside the room, because electromagnetic waves can go through these walls, right? So the next frontier is wearing something like this, that is measuring your heart rate variability and broadcasting your state of consciousness around you, and everybody's state of consciousness influencing the consciousness in this room, digitally monitored even remotely at scripts. Mm. That's where we might be going, and that's why I think this kind of biosensing technology is going to be very important mm. for um, the consciousness project. That's why you're here, well, and Jawbone is here, yeah. <laughs> and Fitbit is here, because we want all of you guys to work together mm. to create consciousness technologies. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm.